Hey guys, I am officially back with part three of Seduce Me to the Demon Wars Eric's Route. So, um, I can't remember if I exactly left this line off, but um, I'll go ahead and read this line and we'll continue back off from where we left off. So, as I said, remember I told you to ponder the possibility of our main character maybe being pregnant. We'll find out hopefully maybe in this part. So, I'll go ahead and continue reading off where we last left off. Everyone in the room nodded their information as Dinah and Sarah left. Well, it looks like we'll be busy for the next couple of days. <laughs> This'll be fun. Man, training's gonna suck. It'll be worth it, though. Damien's right. As we all finished eating, everyone left to either train or do things on their own. I left to start my own work, determined to be prepared for what has to come. Or what was to come, sorry. The demon lord wasn't going to win. I wouldn't let him. I chose a train with Sorrow. He seemed to be very skilled, so I trusted him to train me to the best of his ability. I didn't want to be silent observer in the war. I would pull my weight. Sorrow brought me to the Grand Hall, which he had apparently claimed as his personal training grounds, as Sergeant had to use the official grounds for the army. Personal training grounds. When I train my lady, I bring her here. That way she is not seen by the army. Why would her being seen by the army be an issue? It's not a matter of it being an issue. We simply choose to train together alone. I nodded. If Dinah had her reasons, then that was enough for me. Sorrow nodded in return before holding his hand out to the side. Now, do you have a preferred weapon of choice? Choose wisely. You need to focus and master one weapon if you wish to benefit from this training. I won't allow you to change your mind later. I stared at Sorrow, unsure of why he would ask me that. However, I closed my eyes and thought to myself for a moment. There were a couple of weapons I could think of. I thought of a gun. But what if human guns were powerless here? After all, demons have magic on their side. If they were powerful enough, maybe even a speeding bullet could be blocked with ease. I sighed and thought of what melee weapon I could use. Let's see. Uh, no. A spear? Eh, I don't know. That doesn't really feel like me. Surprise me? Eh. No, I feel like a sword type of person. Like a, like a rapier or something. I don't know. But I like swords. Sarah closed his eyes and closed his outstretched hand into a soft fist. Black and purple mist slowly formed around his hand and wrapped around itself like a spiral on the crest between his fingers and palm. The magic elongated and formed itself into a black handle with a white, almost lavender blade stretching upward from it. Sarah walked over towards me and handed me the sword, letting me feel the light weight of it in my hand. It was almost feather-like, yet my hand knew that this was a weapon. A very simple weapon. You should be able to learn quickly with it. Alright. Sarah nodded and stepped back, gripping his gold spear and going into a stance. I followed suit. Trust your instincts. I'll go slow so you can adjust yourself to the weapon. However, I won't remain slow for long. I stared at Sorrow, now fully setting into what I had signed up for. I was learning how to defend myself and possibly how to kill someone else. I felt a nervous shiver run up my spine before taking a breath and trying to relax my muscles. Sorrow seemed to take my breath as my signal to prepare as he took a step back and readied himself with a stance. Are you ready? I nodded. I add... I had asked to be trained. If I wasn't ready, then I wouldn't ever be. Sorrow crouched down, gripping his spear, before lunging for me, ready to skewer me on its blade. I crouched and swung my sword down to push the blade away from my body. With a loud clash, the spear was pushed to the side. I was shocked at his strength, as I only managed to push his weapon away with my own, with adrenaline helping my own strength against him. I jumped forward and swung my sword against his spear to push the blade away from me. With a loud clash, the spear was pushed to the side, leaving him open. I had him. I felt powerful as I ready to attack him. I lunged in and prepared to pierce him with my own attack. However, Sarah moved his spear across his body, blocking my attack and pushing me back. I growled at myself as I not seeing the strength of his defense. As I landed, though, I saw a small smirk on Sarah's face. Was he proud of me, or was he mocking me? Either way, I used the momentum to lunge forward again, continuing our sparring match. 
We continued to train relentlessly through the day. Each break we had was small, but I understood why. I only had a week to learn how to fight after all. Time wasn't on our side when it came to me learning how to fight, or at least defend myself. As we finished a sparring session and slowly, talk, slowly to take another break, I let out a sigh. I was exhausted, but I knew how I had to keep going. If the Yank and I were going to keep training, then I had to keep up as well. Sorrow let out a small sigh and stretched, wiping some sweat from the side of his brow before looking to me. Let's take a break for now. Yeah, good idea. I collapsed onto the floor on my rear and slouched over my cross legs, thankfully to no longer be on my feet. I thought Taekwondo was hard, but fighting with a weapon was proving itself to be even harder. I felt a little envious for people who were able to master weaponry. I have to admit, I'm impressed. For the first time holding a weapon, you did pretty well. My lady had to train for months to try and use her weapon properly. Well, what does Diana use? I was curious about her. I knew she had magic, but did she really need a weapon? Of course, if her energy ran out, then she would need some sort of protection. Sario stared wide-eyed at me for a second before smiling softly. She uses a saber, a curved sword. While regular straight swords are good for piercing your opponent, curved blades are made for slashing and cutting your opponent down. They're a little difficult to maneuver without in-depth training. Oh, Diana, you're a girl my own heart. Sorry, I love sabers. As much as I love a rapier. Sarah looked down at his hand, forming a saber with a black grip and a deep purple blade. It looked like a masterwork blade, despite it forming out of his magic. As Sarah stared at it, his smile brightened a bit. A saber is much more graceful in combat than a regular sword. Anyone can wield it, but it takes a true master of the blade to use a saber properly and make a fight look like an elegant dance. I was in awe. I could see a soft shadow of adoration in his eyes as he spoke. Did he really adore his mistress that much? Sarah looked to me with a chuckle. I don't just care for my lady. That was obvious. The way he spoke about her spoke volumes of his expression, uh, uh, affection for her. Sorry, guys. Uh, tongue twister. As Sarah looked to me, a flash of realization washed over his eyes. What? You're human, so you would understand. Understand what? Love. I stared at him, knowing the meaning of the word, but not understanding what he meant by saying it. What about love? Well... For a moment, Sarah looked back to the saber in his hand before shaking his head. Never mind. It's nothing. Oh, Sarah likes Diana. Okay, anyway, let's continue reading. I wanted to ask more, but a pair of footsteps echoed through the room from the door causing me to turn around and see who it was. Diana, lightly glistening with a thin layer of sweat and wiping her brow, stepped into the room with a smile. I could hear Sarah's breath hitch softly as Diana walked in. She did a small hair toss, most likely to get some clear behind her neck, before looking to her guard and my trainer. How is training going? G going fine, my lady. How are the heirs? They're strong, but not strong enough. At least not yet. It will take more time to get them up to par with where they need to be for the war. They've been in the human world for too long, and they've lost their sense of real battle. In haste, Diana looked to me and held up her hand towards me, as if to ask for forgiveness. No offense to you, of course. No, it's alright, I understand what she means. I understand, the human world was vastly different from the demon world, so the boys had become humanized and softened. Still, I was sure that they would train hard and become better than the Demon Lord. Anyway, I was just taking a break and wanted to check in. Had to make sure you didn't kill our guest, Sarah. I, I would never! <laughs> Diana's laughter filled the room as Sarah's face brightened to a hot pink tinge. I'm merely joking. I trust you, Sarah. Besides, she can take care of herself. Diana looked to me with a nod and a smile, as if she knew that I would be okay, at least in Sarah's hands. I'll leave you both be then. I'm sure that after we're finished training, your husband will want to replenish his energy, and it wouldn't do if you were still training here when he finishes. With that, Diana turned and walked out of the room. Sarah and I kept our eyes on her before I looked over to the suddenly love-struck guard. 
His eyes were glued to that door that Diana left from, almost unblinking. Mm, I don't know, I want to feel like letting him stare for a little longer, but we really got to get back to the task at hand. Finally, Astero snapped out of it and looked to me, blushing and wide-eyed. Sorry, where were we? <laughs> Cute. Training? Training! Right, let's go again. <laughs> In a complete reversal, Sarah's expression hardened to a serious stare at me. I nodded, knowing that the break we had was now over. Once more, we trained and continued until dinner rolled around. As the soft echo of a dinner time bell reverberated through the halls of the castle, Sarah and I went our separate ways, him to his lady, me to my bedroom. I fell onto my bed exhausted. My body felt completely at the mercy of the fluffy mattress beneath me. Today was rough. Luckily, before I came back to the room, I had been shown bathrooms where I could relieve myself and bathe properly. At least hygiene wouldn't be an issue. I had bathed in the crystal clear water before returning to my room, flopping into my bed like a, hum, bu uh, like a bum. I heard the door open and close, followed by the soft pattern of labored footsteps, walking around the bed and stopping on their side. I knew it was Eric, but I turned my head to verify my guess. I was correct. However, I felt my face flush at the sight. Eric was shirtless, and his skin was beautifully covered in water driplets. His hair was damp, and his breathing was labored. It must have tra he must have trained hard, if not harder than me at least, and bathed right afterward. Hi. <laughs> Good evening, love. I could tell that he wanted to flop onto the bed and simply pass out, but something held him back. I tilted my head at him, making Eric smile. I'm going over what happened today. And... Do you feel disgusted by me? I kept my eyes on Eric, letting my mind wander a bit over him. I still loved him, and didn't feel the need to yell at him or push him away. I had to assume the spirit was still resting from Sarah's attack. Nope. Eric nodded before climbing into bed, and leaning back against the bedpost. Mm, let's cuddle with him. I settled close to him and placed my head on his shoulder. Eric smiled and wrapped an arm around me, holding me close. It's been a long while since I've trained like that. Since Malix, right? Eric nodded with a smile at me. I remembered Malix, that damnable monster. He wanted to kill the boys and even kidnap me as bait. Luckily, he didn't last long. During the time he was around, though, Eric had trained hard and done the best he could. I was kind of proud to see him going at it again. I yawned and got ready for bed. There was no use in prolonging sleep. The darkness welcomed me to its, into its embrace as Eric wrapped his arms around me protectively. <laughs> huh? The cries of the spirit vibrated through my mind. I knew Eric would take a bit to enter my dreams, but I could only look around as the sound of the spirit whimpering echoed around me in the dark. Hello? Go away! Finally, the orb appeared. It wasn't bobbing up and down the air like it usually had before. It was lying on the ground like a ball. I walked over and crouched before sitting down in front of it. The sound of its whimpering made my heart hurt. Did Sarah's attack really hurt it that badly? Even more than that, it was apparently a child. No, you're not. I winced a bit at its words. I was trying to be sincere, but I had to assume the spirit was too hurt to care. Why did you do that? We just wanted to try and get you out of my body. Why did you hurt me? Every word the spirit spoke felt like a knife through my heart. I didn't mean to hurt it, but we had to try. I was certain the intention of the attack was to expel the spirit, not hurt it. You just like him. Like him? You mean Eric? No, the evil man. Evil man? I stared as the spirit gently lifted itself off the ground and began to slowly bob up and down in front of me. The evil man that killed me. <laughs> My body froze as I suddenly heard the demon lord's laughter all around me. The voice bounced through the air, sending wave upon wave of fear through my body in an endless cycle. 
However, the spirit didn't react. Was the spirit causing the voice? The spirit lowered itself back down onto the ground and laid still, the purple aura around it still rippling around it. You're gonna hurt me again! I didn't want it to be hurt. Expelling it was one thing. Causing it pain was another. There had to be some way to force it out without hurting it any more than we already did. I felt a hand suddenly place itself on my shoulder, and the demon lord's voice faded into silence. I quickly turned to see Eric, looking down at me with a concerned expression. Are you alright? Yeah, yeah. The icky man is back. Eric ignored the spirit and gently turned my body to face him. Don't listen to whatever that spirit says. We'll expel it soon enough. You don't care about her. You just care about babies. I stared I stared as instinctively. Eric summoned his tendrils ready to attack, but expression melted into concern. Something was holding him back, and it made me a bit worried. Was the spirit telling the truth? The spirit simply faded into the dark without continuing the conflict, leaving us alone. Eric? Yes, my princess? Actually, it didn't really give me a choice there, so I just randomly picked. Okay. I had to know. He reacted so violently towards the spirit as a mention of children. Eric's face, however, contorted from the concern it melted into a look of confusion. Where is this coming from? I just want to know. Eric sighed and nodded, making a small lump in my stomach harden. He really wanted me to be pregnant. Before I could speak, though, Eric raised his head with a kind and soft smile. I would be happy to have you bear my children and for you to be a wonderful mother, but not unless you want to. You would be the one bearing the burden the longest. My heart skipped multiple beats. I was shocked at his words. Eric continued. In the demon world, it is a regular occurrence for incubi and succubi to breed as often as possible. It's only natural that I'd want children, princess. However, you are a human, and even more so, you are the one I love. I obey your every command. Before my eyes, Eric slowly wrapped his arms around my form and kissed my forehead. The warmth of his embrace made my entire body melt but I wrapped my arms around him in return. We're not even married yet. We can probably wait until after we say our vows before we think about children. A small laugh erupted from me as I knelt at Eric's chest. He was right. We didn't have to think about it now. I shouldn't have let the idea get to me. Right. <laughs> I nodded in reply, just wanting to completely immerse myself in Eric's arms. The night passed by and morning rose. To my surprise, I woke up alone. I scanned the room for Eric, but found myself in the room by myself. Eric? He left to go train with his brother, sweetie. I turned my head to the sound of Diana's voice. The door was open with Diana standing in the archway, holding a tray of pancakes. My stomach growled at the sight, but something in my heart felt giddy, as well as seeing Diana with food. Here, something warm today. Thank you. Diana passed me the plate as I began to eat. I knew that I had to work hard, my, er, work hard myself today, so I needed all the energy I could get. Diana, however, watched me as I ate. At her, as her gaze got the better of my nerves, I looked at her with a confused look. What? Do you know the child that's in your body? I shook my head, making Diana press her lips together in an irritated line. I felt a little bad that I couldn't be of more help, but the spirit didn't have a name, at least not one I knew of. Diana shook her head and leaned against the wall, crossing her arms and legs. Well, we'll be able to expel it soon enough. I have Shadow in charge of figuring out how to sever the ties that spirit has on your body and forcing it free. My mind instantly froze. My memory brought up the images of this crying spirit and the tears it wept as I entered my dreams. Would this new method hurt the spirit? Diana stared in shock at my question. You are concerned for the spirit's safety over your own. We really heard it last time. It was crying. Diana clicked her teeth and shook her head. That spirit is clinging to you and using its emotions to make you feel sorry for it. 
It wants you to love it, so you will let it stay in your body. Was that really the case? A child who was who was hurt cries mostly when they are seriously hurting. But what if Dinah was right? What if it was trying to manipulate me? There were too many questions in my head. I shook up my thoughts and continued eat, finishing the pancakes. Diana pushed herself off the wall and began to leave the room, but stopped to look back at me with a concerned face. Does the spirit ever enter your dreams? Yes, it does. Diana stared at me for a moment, most likely trying to form her thoughts into words before speaking. When she did, I couldn't stop myself from going wide-eyed. You know, there is a way we can stop the spirit from communicating with you until we can expel it. I stared in shock. Why wasn't this brought up before? Diana grimaced at my expression and sighed. The spirit is a child and is most likely repulsed by romance and sex, am I correct? Yeah, but what does that have to do with stopping it? The spirit is feeding on and using your energy. The only way to stop it is to drain yourself of energy. She wasn't serious, was she? She expected me to give Eric all of my energy, all the time. What about my training? Diana turned fully to me and crossed her arms. Essentially, after training, give your remaining energy to your fiancé. Kiss, hug, fuck, it doesn't matter. As long as your energy is completely drained. You'll sleep, and because you'll have no energy, the spirit won't be able to appear in your dreams. You'll have an empty sleep. It made sense, but at the same time, I felt a little out of place. Eric needed my energy to survive, yes, but to give him all of my energy? Part of me felt a little excited to do it, while the other side of me felt that it was completely wrong to give energy for that reason. Diana shrugged, breaking my thoughts and making me give my full attention once again. It's up to you. We should have the means to expel the spirit in a day or two. Thank you. I was curious, however. Why Diana was interested in helping me? Was she already doing so much for me and the others by helping me get back to the human world? Before Diana could turn to leave, I stood up from the bed. Diana, why are you helping us with this anyway? Diana's gaze burned into mine as her expression softened. Something in her eyes showed a form of weakness, almost reflecting the eyes of an innocent child. What the? You may not believe it, but I do actually enjoy aiding people. When I can. At least. I can only stare at Diane in surprise. I could tell she was being genuine like the for from just from the just from the sound of her voice, and the look in her eyes made me feel somehow like crying. For some reason, I found myself dropping my empty play on the floor and rushing to Diana, hugging her tightly. Diana tensed within my arms and stared wide at me. I couldn't stop myself from hugging her body. What, what the I wasn't in control of myself. What was going on? Help me. Dear, what are you? I didn't speak again. I wanted to, but I couldn't. Was the spirit in control again? Diana finally relaxed in my arms and wrapped her arms around my form, petting over my hair gently. How pitiful. With each stroke, I felt anxiety wane and clear from my body. From where they came, I would never know, but I couldn't do anything but allow it to pass. Diana seemed to be some form of comfort for the spirit. However you got into this body... We will free you, child. I felt myself nod. However, I couldn't stop myself from feeling a strong energy pull from my body. Was was Diana draining my energy? Yeah, let her. She was taking my energy so that the spirit can control me. I had to let her do it. As my body became weaker and weaker, the control of my body became more and more obtainable. Finally, my body felt light, but I found function in my nerves and limbs to function on my own coalition. Are you yourself again? Yes. Diana nodded before releasing me and looking down at me. To my surprise, her eyes were glowing a bright gold, probably from the energy she had taken from me. However, it had to be done for me to regain my body. Diana's eyes returned to their normal red color as she smiled. For now, rest a bit. You'll be able to regain some energy and be able to train as if nothing had happened. As long as you're not brimming with it, the spirit shouldn't be able to take control of you again. I nodded in reply, finding myself step back and slip back onto the bed behind me. I held my head, feeling slightly dizzy from the experience. The door opened and closed, so I assumed that Diana had left me alone. 
My heart felt at peace for some reason, even feeling as weak as I did. Was the spirit appeased with Diana's in intervention? I couldn't see why it would have been. She's very special. That's why. The echo of the spirit's voice reverberated through my mind, but as I waited for it to explain, no further response came. I let out a sigh. The spirit was gone for now, and I had full control. For now, rest until training. I went to the Grand Hall, knowing Sarah would either be there expecting me or would arrive there shortly after me. Nevertheless, I was ready to train again with him. What I did expect was seeing Sarah and Diana in the room. I quickly ducked back around the corner and listened, not wanting to disturb them if they were talking. That damn little... how dare she... My lady, please calm down. Wait, what? What was going on? No, Sarah, it is not all right. That selfish brat had the nerve to... Is Sayer, please. I'm all right, I swear. Stop talking and let me finish. Diana's harsh tone echoed through the hall out of the door before a soft sigh appeared. I peered around the corner and watched as Diana ran her hand along Sarah's cheek gingerly, tracing a mark on it with her fingers. Radiant purple light emanated from her hand as Diana glided back and forth over Sarah's skin. Sarah, however, had a small smile painted over his lips as he watched her work. Damn her to the deepest pits of hell! You're being too harsh, my lady. Muskaya is being a selfish brat, Sero. I saved her from dying, and this is how she repays me? Ungrateful little... I didn't understand what was happening, but I could tell there was another woman involved, someone named Muskaya. What was really odd was that Diana wasn't acting strange. She was upset over something a girl did to Saro. It was kind of cute, but it was not what I was expecting from Diana. You're being adorable right now. Diana stopped moving and looked up at Saro in surprise. A large blush flashed across her cheeks. Saro, growing bolder, gently lifted a hand up between them and placed it under her chin, lifting her head slightly. I promise that I'm alright. She barely scratched me. B but she... Loves her mistress very much, just like I do. She couldn't help it. I did try to surprise you, after all. She was startled and wanted to protect you, just like I would have. Diana grumbled, pressing her lips into a fine line as she stared down at his chest. She still attacked you. Which I'm sure she's very sorry for. Let it go. Sorrow moved his hand to cup Diana's cheek, rubbing his thumb along her cheekbone. Diana closed her eyes but didn't lean into his hand. You know, you didn't yell at me for saying your name. My priority was not correcting you. You were concerned about me. Yes, I was. Why wouldn't I be? Sarah frowned a bit as Diana opened her eyes and looked up at him, trying to peer unfazed at his teasing. However, the blush that still rayed from her face didn't lie. Why are you concerned about me, Isaiah? You've protected me my whole life when it's my job to protect you. You didn't correct me again. Silence followed as Sarah waited for her to answer. I was curious myself, especially since she seemed to not reciprocate Sarah's feelings. Diana closed her eyes and took a small breath before finally replying. I care about you, Sarah. You've been by my side ever since we were mere children. Every time you've gotten hurt, I... I watched in awe as Diana brought her hand up and ran her fingers along the scar on his chest, between the lapels of his jacket. Sarah stared at Di as Diana traced around it, her face painted in sadness. I know you vowed to protect me with your life, but that doesn't mean you must accept every wound on your body as insignificant. Diana closed her eyes, forming a fist against Sarah's chest and clenching it hard. The scar must have been, had some significant, uh, significance to make her that upset. I bit my lower lip. I was watching this unfold, unsure what to do. Should I leave them be? Should I interrupt? I did have to train. Nah, yeah, let them finish. It's cute. I didn't want to be rude. Whatever they had to settle, I needed to be patient. I stuck close to the wall behind me and listened further, peeking to barely see what was going on. It still bothers me. I thought I was going to lose you that day. But you stepped in. I did. 
That was the day before you signed your life away to me. A stupid decision. I stared wide-eyed as Sarah cupped Diana's cheek and forced her look up at him, making her gasp and meet his gaze in surprise. Stop. I won't let you think that my decision was a mistake. Diana closed her eyes and leaned her cheek ever so slightly against Sarah's hand, making him visibly inhale a breath of surprise. I don't think I will ever understand you. Even after all of these years, I still don't understand your devotion. Dinah let out a small sigh before stepping away and looking up at Sarah with a serious expression. I should go. The boys will be waiting for me to train them, and your student will be here soon. Without letting Sarah reply, Dinah turned and walked toward the door. I stepped away from my hiding spot, not wanting Diana to know I was eavesdropping. As I came into her view, she froze for a second before continuing on out of the room and down the hall. Sarah watched as she left, staring at the back of her head until it vanished beyond the doorframe. I looked over and finally walked towards Sarah, not wanting to interrupt his gaze with my presence. She really can't see it. Sarah? Sarah finally turned and looked at me with his eyes drowned in hopelessness. It was almost heartbreaking to see his face so heavy and downrodden. He seemed to have completely or seemed to have completely confided in me with this new expression, because I was positive that was an emotion he hid very well from uh, for most everyone. Sarah finally looked to the ground. My lady doesn't understand love. She's always been told that love for her is impossible because of who she is, no matter how much she dreams of it. Because of that, she can't recognize it, even when it's standing right in front of her. It was a matter of circumstance. She needed to see his love for her. If she was bred to accept that love didn't exist, then we need to prove that what she knew was wrong. Sarah looked up at me in surprise, a small glimmer of hope rekindling at my words. You really think that she... I know she can. I mean, look at me. I'm going to be married to the man I love. Surely love exists, even for demons. I watched with a smile as I saw happiness slowly seep back into Sarah's expression. He couldn't give up on her. He would be able to show her his love somehow. After a brief moment, Sarah let out a sigh, closing his eyes. He turned to me, and when he opened his eyes, my relentless trainer had appeared with a serious look on his face. Without having to say anything to me, he stepped back and summoned his spear. That was a fast turnaround. He placed a foot behind him and prepped himself into a stance. Wait, was he going to materialize my weapon? How was I? Sarah suddenly charged at me, making me screech and dodge out of the way. What was he doing? Sarah! What are you waiting for? Summon your weapons! What? He wasn't being serious, right? He expected me to use magic? That was impossible. As I managed to duck and dodge his attacks, my fingertips began to tingle. Energy rushed from my veins and under my skin, tickling my nerves. It was unnatural, but somehow I felt comfortable with it. Was this truly magic at work, or was I just nervous, not wanting to be skewered? I had a try. I jumped away from Sarah and quickly closed my eyes, focusing on my hands. I needed my weapon. Within my hands formed a handle of lavender mist. It glistened before finally shifting and forming into the sword I was, I was used to. Gripping it and feeling it physically in my hand, I smirked to turn back to Sarah, bracing for another attack. I jumped forward and swung my sword against his spear to push the blade away from me. With a loud clash, the spear was pushed to the side, leaving him open. Like a repeated memory, I attacked him, clashing my weapon with his multiple times. The chime of our weapons smashing against each other rang through the room, the sound almost piercing my mind. It wasn't a noise I was ever going to be used to. Like the last time, we trained for hours on end, stopping once or twice for a break. However, I could feel my body slowly getting used to the feel of swinging a weapon and defending myself. At least I would be prepared in case something were to happen. As the sun began to set and the purple sky began to darken, we stopped once again for a third, and most likely final break. Sarah stretched and let out a small yawn as I did the same. I think I'm getting used to this. A chuckle escaped Sarah's throat as he rose from one of his stretches. 
What stopped both of us from laughing was an echo conversation in the hall, softly reverberating into the room. Huh? Are you sure? Another kingdom wants to join the rebellion? It would seem so. Diana isn't happy about it, though. Why not? The leader of that kingdom is so handsome! He was, indeed. But an alliance through marriage? Oh, come on! You can't tell me I'm the only one who can see it! I can see them being a beautiful king and queen! I don't think she will marry him, despite it being a wise choice. She would be stupid not to. Well, the last time she signed her life away to marriage, her entire family was killed off while she was away. I don't think she could ever let marriage control her again. I guess... Man, the only person she has now is that guard. My curiosity took hold of me and caused me to hug the wall near the door. Listening in further, Sarah, however, remained where he was, looking toward the ground. I wonder how they met. He's not an incubus, but he's mega powerful. He is indeed very skilled. I'm slightly jealous of her for having such a devoted guard. Devoted? He's crazy! I've heard them talk in private before. He keeps saying that he's in love with her. Love! That is very... odd. However, I wouldn't be surprised if her natural aura has affected him after years of servitude. I believe he's been with her since they were children, so that's over a hundred years of protecting her and being close. Yeah, <laughs> he's probably just enthralled by her. She enthralls everyone she meets. A pure-blooded succubus will do that. At least she's the only pure-blooded demon of Lilith in the world. That we know of at least. The conversation trailed off as the pair moved away from the room, and I looked back at Sarrow, see seeing him grip his spear and grit his teeth. He didn't seem to like what Robin and Faye had to say. Sarrow? Sarrow looked up at me, a dull glaze over his eyes. From the expression on his face, I could tell that he had heard things like that before, but it still seemed to affect him emotionally. I frowned and walked over to him as he shook his head. What they said about her marriage was true. When the Demon Lord's heirs left the Demon World, my lady left to go after them. However, while she was gone, the Demon Lord attacked this castle. I watched as Sarah gripped his spear even tighter than before, shutting his eyes and turning his head away from me almost in shame. The Demon Lord's henchmen, the imp demons who brought you here, infiltrated our defenses and were able to reach the heart of the castle where my lady's parents and unborn baby sister were hiding. Through some form of blood magic, they were able to break through the protective barriers around the room and... He didn't need to explain. The heavy weight in my gut acknowledged what he was going to say before he could speak it. I looked to the floor, suddenly feeling very sorry for Diana. She lost her entire family while she had been in the human world, trying to save them. It was too cruel. Sarah let out a shaky sigh before looking back up to me. When my lady returned, she vowed to seek vengeance and destroy the Demon Lord's tyranny. She formed the rebellion and now, here we are, readying ourselves for the final battle. Everyone only sees the hard-faced, cutthroat queen of the rebellion when they look at her, as if she were unable to love or care. Sarah's hand reached up for his collar where a beautiful purple rose charm hung. His finger ran over the surface as he smiled to himself. However, Isaiah is still the sweet and innocent girl I grew up with. She's still the woman who saved me and protected me from a fate worse than death. I know deep down that the love I feel for her is pure and true. I vowed to protect her with my life, and I will forever stand by that promise. It's just difficult to hope that one day things may change, and that the one you love may turn around and say they love you in return. Sarah didn't reply. He looked up at me, deep in thought, before shaking his head. I thought I saw a glimmer of hope, but he rid himself of whatever thought he had been focusing Never on. Never mind that. We need to focus. Let's continue. 
I nodded, taking my weapon again and preparing for our final sparring match. I entered my room, thinking about what Diana had said to me that morning. If I drained myself of energy, then the spirit wouldn't have the power to appear in my dreams. But it, did I want to do that? Eric appeared soon after, exhausted as ever. I continued to ponder as Eric sat down in bed and stretched. Another long day. How was your day, love? My mind continued to ponder. I had to make a choice. Did I care if the spirit appeared in my dreams? I needed rest without bizarre dreams. The spirit needed to stop controlling me and enticing me with its emotions. The question was how to give Eric my energy. I could easily sleep with him and give him my energy through sex, but I wanted our sex to be about the mood, not a means to an end. I looked to Eric and stared, taking in every detail of him. Eric? Hmm? What is it? Eric seemed confused for a brief moment, but eventually smiled. Crawling towards me, I leaned forward and smiled as Eric's lips gently pressed against mine. He tasted absolutely sweet against my lips. It was almost intoxicating. The kiss he was bringing me under, I found that to not be fair of him, being that was naturally an incubus with the ability to make me swoon. But every time he kissed me, or just his ravishment on me, made me forget the unfairness of the situation and allowed me to simply melt into the moment. I wrapped my arms around and pulled him close to me, causing us to fall back onto the bed with him over top of me. Slowly, everything became just about Eric and, uh, and his love, letting me melt into the sensations we were exchanging. Eric, however, took the moment to pull away softly and stare down at me, looking for permission to continue in my eyes. I knew what I was getting into, so I smiled and pulled him back down to capture his lips again. It was sweet to know how considerate he was about the situation, but I was okay. I let myself go into the moment, closing my eyes and wrapping my legs around Eric. He seemed to get the picture, wrapping an arm behind my arched back and scooting us up to lay with my head in the pillows. Our kiss only intensified as Eric slowly gripped my hips and ground himself between my legs, making me let out a gasp and moan against his lips, causing him to chuckle and reply. I could feel his desire to keep going as day between us. Uh, clear as day, sorry. You see, he became slow, almost torturously so, as he began to strip himself and me down to become bare to each other. I felt the cool air rush across my skin, making me shudder beneath him. Each kiss he planted on my skin caused a ripple of pleasure to flow through me. It was hard to hold back the moans wanting to escape me, but I let a quiet handful out to entice Eric to do more, go further with our foreplay. Looking up at him, his eyes began to glow a familiar gold tint, allowing the fire within my core ignite and burn heavily. I felt my body or I felt my mind become only filled with thoughts of Eric and screaming his name as passionately as I could. The entire castle would know exactly who was receiving my love and whose love I was taking during the night. There wasn't a need for words to be exchanged, as Eric's slow smile grew into a passionate and lustful smirk. His tongue mesmerized every sweet spot on my body, and he used this knowledge to make my to make my wither or sorry, to make me wither beneath him, ushering me to beg for more. My body was slowly pleading with my mind to let me release my desire and craving out so Eric could satisfy me. However, I wanted to fully give everything, and that meant taking things slow and steady. Eric seemed to understand as he slowly built our floor play up to where we couldn't even take it anymore. All we could think about was making love. As we finally gave in, we were both gifted with swift grasp and pleasurable moans at the sensation. The air was hot and steamy as he panted and wrote out our love making, becoming lost in each other's eyes as my mind began to recount everything I loved about Eric. He was devoted, delicate, but at the same time he was everything my body desired. I can only imagine the same thoughts running through his mind as he captured my lips in his and swallowed my moans as they rushed out of my throat. As we apexed, our fingers dug into each other, desperate to ride through our high and simmer into a gorgeously placed afterglow. Our breaths and hearts beat synced, and we were left staring deep into each other's eyes, exhausted but full of love. I love you, my prince. 
The feeling of joy that rushed through me caused me to nuzzle into Eric's warm embrace, making him chuckle and kiss over my head, despite being tired himself. Still, the aura around our bodies was perfect for a peaceful passage to sleep. It was, surprisingly, a peaceful night. I woke up once again alone. However, I knew that Eric was off training. He seemed happy that he was getting back into the swing of it, despite only able to train for a short time before the final battle. However, as I got myself ready, a knock echoed at my door. Huh? Come in. The door opened to reveal a sight I did not expect at all. You! My heart froze in my chest at the man who rep represented himself at my door. Huh? What's wrong? Get away from me! I scrambled back away from the demon lord, instantly recognizing him. I found myself against the wall, grabbing the nearest object and tucking, chucking it at him. If this was going to turn into a fight, then I would attack after I beamed him with whatever I threw at him. To my surprise, a purple tendril stretched out from the ground in front of him and smacked the object away. How did he have Eric's power? What the? Love, what's wrong? Why was the demon lord calling me love? This was a trick. The demon lord brought me here, and I was not going to fall for it. I could put out my hands ready to fight. However, I wasn't allowed to react as two purple tentacles wrapped themselves around my wrists and gently pulled my arms down to my sides. Gah! Princess! I shut my eyes, trying to block him out mentally. He was pretending to be Eric. He was... I opened my eyes again to see Eric with a face etched with worry and panic. And the tentacles by his head was the object I had thrown at him, but he stood where the demon lord was. How? I, buck I buckled down onto my knees and curled over myself, wrapping my arms around my body. This was too frightening, too real. What was happening? I looked up to see the spirit floating silently behind Eric before fading away. I knew it, but how was the spirit able to make Eric look like the demon lord? It was a twisted method if it was trying to get me to like it. Eric knelt down and gently wrapped his arm around me, nuzzling my head. Shh. It's okay. I barely noticed that I was shaking and whimpering. I couldn't really stop myself. The man who had trapped me here appeared before my eyes all of a sudden. Then he vanished into the man I swore to love. Eric kissed the top of my head. The spirit must be playing tricks on you again. We'll remove it soon enough. I promise. I nodded, believing what Eric said. This would only last a short while, then the spirit would be gone. As I arrived in the hall for training, I was surprised to see Diana in the room instead of Sarah. Diana? Diana turned to me and crossed her arms, taking in my form. You will be training with me today. I apologize for Sarah's absence. What do you mean? Where is Sarah? He asked to train on his own for the day. As he will be in the front lines of the siege, I granted him permission. I pressed my lips together into a fine line, but nodded. If he was charging at the front, then it made sense that he'd want to take a day and work on himself. I held my hand out and summoned my weapon, ready to fight the queen of the rebellion head on. All right, then. Don't hold back. Diana nodded and prepped her stance, summoning her saber and bringing it back behind her. I had to use this new training partner as a new experience. Not everyone would fight like Sarah, so this was a good, cha good challenge for me. Fighting with Diana was no easy task. She was quick and thought ten steps ahead of me, catching me off guard at some point. Still, I could tell that I was putting up a good fight with my defense. What's nah, sorry. What surprised me was how time passed by without me even noticing it. The more I clashed with Diana, the more ignorant I became of the sky's eventual descent from light purple to dark orange. Soon enough, our training had ended. I panted out of breath, but surprisingly still on my feet. I didn't understand how or why, but I could only assume that I was getting better, which was a good thing. Diana smirked as she relaxed, stretching back and making her saber vanish. I will admit, dear, you've done well for just a handful of days. I grinned happy to hear that I had impressed Diana with my skills. I only trained for a couple of days, but somehow, er, but showed great improvement. Maybe the demon world was aiding me in becoming a stronger person. Thank you, Diana. Diana nodded before walking to the exit of the room. Now, please excuse me. I must see to the boys. 
You are free to come with if you'd like. I declined and left the room as well, towards the opposite direction. Feeling my bed calling to me, besides, I didn't want to be a distraction. As I was heading to my room, I passed by a door that was only open a small crack, overhearing a quiet conversation. This idea is idiotic, guard. Leaving during a war could be considered treason, and you would be abandoning your duties to your mistress. I know that, but... I stopped walking and peered inside, wanting to see what was going on. Sarah was standing steadfast by the large fireplace as Shadow, arrogant as ever, leaned over the small table that was covered in maps and books. Do you really think a quest like this is beneficial to the war? All it would do is leave us with one less powerful ally for a significant amount of time. I would not be gone long. I'd research this. Yes, yes, I've researched this route multiple times. You've already spouted that more times than I care to appreciate. Regardless, even if things did go your way, and you journey there and back without some form of incident, you would turn up a day before the siege. Your mistress will not likely forgive your absence. But I have a feeling that this will be worth that absence. If I can do this, if I can prove that my love for her is real! You are having delusions of grandeur. Love does not exist for us demons. This quest is folly. I glared at Shadow. Why was he being such an ass? Sarah, however, looked to his feet, gritting his teeth and shutting his eyes. You came here and asked for my counsel, guard. I am merely telling you the truth of the matter. Whatever hope that human placed in your mind is illogical, and only a detriment to our cause. I hope you take my words into careful consideration. Nothing fruitful will come from this journey you wish to undertake. As he finished speaking, Shadow faded into a black shadow on the ground and slipped into the dark corner of the library, vanishing from sight completely. Sarah growled beneath his gritted teeth and slammed his fist against the mantle behind him, forming a large crack in the stone. Damn it! Shadow was wrong. Whatever Sarah wanted to do to prove his love for Dinah was worth it. I felt my heart agree with my thoughts with a firm thump in my chest. Taking a deep breath, I opened the door and entered the room. Sarah looked up at me with a startled gaze when he heard the door creak as it opened. Oh! I... uh... Sarah looked down at the table, embarrassed, while he rubbed the back of his neck. How long were you there? Long enough to hear what Shadow said about me. With a frown, Sarah turned his gaze to his feet. As I stepped further into the room, he let out a sigh. I've been thinking a lot about what we've talked about. You asked me if there was a way to prove my love to Isaiah. Well, there is a way. Really? Sarah nodded before ushering me over to the table. I walked over and looked at what Sarah wanted to show me. A large set of maps all point to a single area, the Abyssal Plains, near the ocean. There's a legend that has been passed around the demon world for eons, the Golden Rose. It's said that if someone finds his hiding place and proves that the love in their heart is real, the rose will blossom and become physical proof of their true love. Is this legend true? No one can say for sure. No one has ever found it. Yet the legend exists, so it must have some form of merit. I've tried for years to find its location, and now I have. Sarah pointed a hand-drawn circle on the map and glided his fingers along the map towards the area where the rose was said to be. It would only take me two days to get there and to return. If the story is true, then I'm positive I can find it and bring it back to his heir as proof of my love. As Sarah finished, his smile darkened to a sad grimace. However, I have been advised against this journey, and for good reason. I would be abandoning my lady days before the final battle, and that alone could be considered treason. Even more so, would she forgive me for leaving at such a crucial time? I looked at Sarah's face, seeing the conflicting emotions running through his eyes, as he stared at the maps in front of us, was it really worth it? Still, this may be my only chance to do this. When we win this war, my lady will require me to be by her side more so than ever. I must be there to support her at all times when she rebuilds this broken world, but I would lose the chance to prove my love to her. 
I didn't know what to say in response. While I wanted to do what he felt was right, there were so many things that could go wrong. What if the legend was false? He would be gone for nothing and would come back empty-handed. What if something happened while he was away? He wouldn't be able to return in time to help. Or what if something happened to him on his journey? He wasn't invincible. I closed my eyes trying to figure out what to say to him. When I realized what I wanted to say, I spoke up. Oh shoot, I don't know. Um... Oh, I don't... I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Should I? Should I? Oh, sorry, guys. This is gonna take me a moment because, like, I I really don't know. I I mean, I really don't know what I want to say. I mean, I don't know if I want to tell him to go or stay or. I got. I gotta look up. These, I gotta look up these options people pick and wonder what happens. Cause I mean, I, I'm. I really don't know. I feel like if I choose it wrong, like will Diana die if I do? <laughs> I don't want to kill Diana. Oh. Okay, let me see here. Uh, somebody's got another route here. Okay, so apparently me choosing one of these options won't affect this. Okay. Um... Okay, because I, I was really worried about that because I'm like, oh my gosh, if I choose one. Okay, so I feel like I should tell him to go. It says it does not affect an ending, so we are okay to choose what we choose here, okay? Alright. So I really love Dinah. It was plain as day. And, if she wasn't persuaded yet from his words and dedications, this journey would convince her it was worth the risk if he was really in love with her. She was strong enough to handle things on her own while Sarah was away. Sarah looked to me in surprise as I smiled at him. If this will prove your love to her, then you should find the rose and give it to her. Whatever the risk is, if you believe it's worth it, then do it. Something in Sarah's eyes glistened, as if a spark had been ignited, and the hope in his heart began to burn with joy. A smile grew onto his face as he nodded, now determined. You're right. I'll leave tonight and come back with the rose, even if it's the last thing I do. You're right. I'll have. I'll leave tonight. Oh, sorry, that says. <laughs> sometimes I forget what, while I'm reading it and he's speaking it. I do that. I'm sorry, guys. I do that sometimes. Okay. I grinned widely. I was happy for him. To see Sarah so determined to prove his love filled my soul with joy. 
As he stepped towards me, I watched as he wrapped his arms around me, giving me a friendly hug. Thank you for your help. I won't ever forget this. I smiled and hugged him back, patting his back. At any words, he squeezed me tighter before letting me go. Sarah nodded to me before rushing out of the library, most likely to set off on his journey as quickly as possible. He needed all the time he could get. I, however, felt my heart give an approving thud in my chest. I had done the right thing. It raised a question, however. Would I have done the same for the one I love? After a brief moment, I nodded to myself. Yes, I would have. If I left the library and headed towards my room, now filled with a termination of my own. Entering the room, I felt heavy. To think that I had attacked Eric that morning was horrifying. I could have hurt him. I didn't want to hurt him. Then again, I had thought he was a demon lord. I had every reason to be frightened and try to fight him. But if he had appeared for real, would I have been able to stop him? I was training, yes, but only to defend myself, not to kill anyone. I can help, you know. Huh? Spirit was enticing me again. The room around me felt frozen in time once again. You can help me with what? With a lot of things, actually. If you want, I can give you really cool powers. Why are you being so friendly? Huh? I always wanted to help you. The spirit was making little sense. I was already training and I was completely tired. I closed my eyes and looked away. I can take care of myself. Well, if you need any extra power, let me know. I can keep nasty people away, just like last time. My words seemed to silence the spirit for a moment before it spoke again, as if unresolved. I still want to help you. You shouldn't be pushed around by that icky man. Eric isn't pushing me around. It's only a matter of time, though. I looked at the spirit somewhat insulted. Did it really doubt my ability to protect myself? What do you mean? You're a human. Humans aren't as powerful as demons. Especially not the evil man. Before my eyes, the room around me shifted to the interior of a dungeon. I panicked, looking around while being trapped in place. Smoke slowly eased into the space from the dark corners, making me cough and wheeze. What was the spirit doing? Stop it! Use my magic! What? I felt a soft glow in my chest. For some for some reason, I felt calm and the air became easier to breathe in. Was this the spirit's doing? Soon, fire began to, sp uh, began to peek in and I was surrounded in flames. I wrapped my arms around myself, trying to lean away from the heat. A human can't survive in the demon world! But I can help you! I can protect you! Stop this vision! Now! This was getting ridiculous. How could this be happening? Was I somehow in a dream? This was out of control, and I needed to find some sort of freedom. All of a sudden, the flames around me vanished, and I was back in my room, staring into the empty space with a spirit in the middle. Why won't you let me help you? I'm stuck in your body! I don't need your help. I have Eric. Those words slipped out. A brief silence followed before the spirit spoke again. The icky man is related to the evil man, right? Eric? That came out of nowhere. I nodded, knowing what she asked. Eric is the demon lord's son. What? Was the spirit concerned that Eric was evil too? Just because he's the demon lord's son doesn't make him a bad guy. Does he really love you? I stared at the spirit, trying to see what the question was going. It was trying to sway me, so I smiled and nodded. Eric indeed loved me, more than anything. He does. I know it. And if he doesn't, what if he's lying? He wouldn't lie to me. He could be. Demons always lie to get what they want. I was lied to. You were. Someone, a person, made a promise to protect me. But they didn't. The room became darker and colder as the spirit began to suddenly cry. I felt horrible listening to it weep. Before I could comfort it, though, it vanished into the air, leaving me in the room as time began to move forward once more. 
I let out a sigh and rubbed my head. This was getting ridiculous. When was I going to be free of the spirit? I was becoming more anxious by the day. Even as Eric came into the room, I felt my worry about the situation grow. I barely noticed as Eric finally entered the room. He slowly entered, most likely cautious from what happened that morning. As memories of what happened appeared in my, uh, in my mind, I couldn't help but frown. I had attacked him. The spirit was trying to make me hurt the man I loved, and I couldn't have felt more ashamed for, failing to, for falling for its tricks. I looked up at Eric with sad eyes, surprising, surprising him at the closed door at last behind him and walked to join me on the bed. Eric, I'm sorry. Love, it's all right. Eric wrapped his arms around me and nuzzled my head. I closed my eyes and relaxed into the embrace. Feeling him gently drain me of energy, I didn't fight back. I felt no reason to. I know it's not your fault. Okay, guys, so we are going to stop right here, um, and we'll continue on further later. But, um, so, I mean, tell me what you guys think. I mean, I don't know. Like, I can't figure out who this child is. Like, I keep wanting to think maybe it's the baby that the character might be pregnant because they just keep bringing up pregnancy, pregnancy. Like, is she pregnant now? And that's why the spirit's staying attached because it wants to become this new child. Or, you know, is she pregnant maybe later? Like, why is the child so attached to her? You know, and why does the child seem to like Diana? Like, it makes me wonder if maybe that child is Diana's little sister. Or it might be a best friend because they were saying that the one guy received an injury. You know, maybe is this child connected to that somehow? I don't know. I mean, I really kind of want to know. I felt like nothing was answered in this part. But, you know, I really also do hope, though, that Sarah gets that gold rose and brings it back to Diana. Oh, I really want them to be in love. They seem so cute together. Oh, I just, I like, I want to ship it right now. They're just so cute. But anyway, though, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy this part. Please tell me what you guys think. Like, what's your theory on the entire story so far? Do just leave a comment and things and tell me what you guys think. So anyway, though, thank you guys. I'll continue this in another part.